Hello and welcome to Up The Villa podcast. This is our League Cup Carabao Cup preview for our trip away to Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, drop this video a like and let us know how you feel like we're going to do and what you feel like the lineup for this game is going to be as well. So obviously we're still all buzzing about what happened against Everton. Um, got all the normal lads on the channel as well today. So Aaron, what did you make of it? Yeah, uh, story of two halves, you know. Um, for me, the first half was, it was a bit lacklustre in places. It was a bit poor in places. Uh, never really got ourselves going off the ground. Managed to keep it at nil-nil. Um, second half, Bailey comes on and changes the game. Atmosphere changes, everything changes. You know, what an impact that man had. Um, and I know he's only on the pitch 21 minutes, but my God, what a player he is. You know, the games have changed completely. It just, it just seems like we all the boys have been injected with a big boost when he came on and um, you could see the camaraderie and you could see the celebration around him when he came on and his goal was corner. Um, yeah, great second half as of Leon Bailey being on the field. Fantastic. But some really good performances as well individually. I thought Dougie Louise was, was insane. You know, I thought we saw a little bit of back to best for Dougie. Uh, Matty Cash was good. Crossing wasn't great, but everything else he did seems to be very solid. I loved the back three. I thought we were solid in the back three. Uh, nice to see Emmy back. Um, Ings, Watkins both performed well. But I'm still struggling to see how the Ings and Watkins things worked, particularly then when you've got Traore, uh, Buendia, and who else? On, Bailey on the bench, you know, not playing. You know, three quality players. I don't, I don't quite understand how we're going to keep working with that, but we'll find a way, I'm sure. But yeah, really, really good. Really pleased. Um, yeah, John McGinn, a shame he went off, but again, he was playing really well until he went off with his concussion. Uh, yeah, good game, mate. Really, really good game. I enjoyed it. Um, Everton are a good side. You know, they're a side that we need to be matching and beating um, because they will be around us at some point come the end of the season. So if we're beating teams like Everton three 0 I think we can we can we can be positive moving forward. Definitely. I mean, Ryan, me and you, we had a right day, didn't we? But I mean, my throat's still in bits. So you're on the you're on the the stuff again. Um, you know, fan cams, you, you were gearing for it, weren't you? But um, what did you make of it? <laughs> yes, hair of the dog, this one is, mate. Um, yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, we was in the pub, weren't we, early doors, sinking a few beers, getting right in the mood for this one. It, I don't know, I just had the... It, it just felt it was the beginning again. Uh, the atmosphere was great against Newcastle, Brentford, but I just felt there was something in the air about this feature. It was going to be under the lights. Everton at home, everyone was reminiscing about that that Friday night game as well. So there was a big buzz. We had a we had a full strength squad as well to pick from. So absolutely buzzing. And, and like Karen said, when Leon Bailey come on, he just changed the game and the whole end. Jesus, oh, I've seen your cuts and bruises on your leg anyway, but uh, the whole end just erupted and it was like goal. Everyone's buzzing. Goal. Everyone's just going mad again. Goal. But when, when that Bailey one went through, it. it, it he took it on his head and smashed it. My God, um, the scenes, the limbs, everything just come flooding back. It was, it was, it was unreal. That whole end was was unreal, absolutely unreal. To be fair, anyone that's watching this now, the the highlight shows don't do the, the sound justice. Go and check out Max Stokes's vlog, and when that. Um, Leon Bailey goal goes in that is the whole end noise that is the noise that we are hearing it was so loud so everyone check it out the last goal on his video quality Justin yeah oh, brilliant mate just a quick shout out to Matthew because he's managed to from Cincinnati Villains has given me uh, a, a, he's got me a couple of shirts now that I'll be missing but this one is a, is a beaut so just wanted to thank him for that on the game Phenomenal. I mean, they've, you've covered everything, really. The thing I'd like to say is another big shout out to Dean and the coaches. You know, we are seeing an evolution now in how we are playing. We've got a set piece coach, and things are happening around set pieces. We've seen got an attacking coaching. We look really good going forward. And Smith came after after game, and he said he highlighted that Matt Target was getting a lot of space on that left hand side, and he decided that because I was surprised he put 
Bailey on his left wing back, to be honest. I thought, oh, that's a bit of a risk at nil nil, you know, because he could get caught there. But he obviously saw the amount of space he was getting, and that no, no more highlighted than when Danny Ying smashes the ball over to the other side of the pitch and he's running clean through on goal. So just a huge shout out to Dean Smith and the coaches, really, because, you know, I, I just think we're going to evolve and, and develop into a really, really good team. A fantastic day. You can't beat scoring three goals in, in a few minutes, you know, just like Ryan says that. The noise just kept getting louder and louder and louder. And when we all, it's all like we all took a breath when Bailey headed it down. Because we all thought this is this is going to be amazing if this goes in, and it did. Just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Love it. This is what we this is what we're doing. It's what we want. You know, we love Villa. How, we how love good were the um, how good were the assists as well yesterday? I didn't. It didn't really sink in till the morning. No. But the Doug, Douglas Louise ball to Matty oh, Cash and the Danny amazing, the Danny yeah. Ings one as well outside of his boots. Yeah. Unreal, man. Unreal. And I think I think in the lead up to that, in the lead up to that, Matty Cash assist for the first goal, uh, for his for his first goal, yeah, you know, it was the triangles all the way from our yeah. defense. Yeah. You know, it was like one, two, three, bang, one, two, three, bang, one, two, three, bang, goal. You know, that was beautiful. Well, say, hopefully, this is there. this this is the coaching. This is what I'm saying. We've got this attacking yeah. coach now, and this is what we want to see, isn't it? Yeah. Good triangles yeah. and attacking, flowing football with Good quality players, and that's what well, that's what we saw yesterday, definitely. And the yeah, finishing. I think with, uh, just quickly, Luke. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, like uh, Justin just said there about the left hand side. Since when have we ever bought on a left winger for a left back? Ever, yeah. you know, yeah. ever. So he needs a lot of respect for that. Yeah, huge. And it, huge. it's forward thinking substitutions as well. It's not yeah. reactive ones. It was forward yeah. thinking, proactive changes yesterday, which changed the game. So. We've been naive at times for for not being able to do that, and probably you know not yeah not being able to do. It, but we've got options now, so and game changers. So well, he, we, he spotted the weakness, and we've got a player on the bench there to exploit it, and that's the difference now, isn't it? That's what this the summer has hopefully given us these players to go. You know what? You know, there's a weakness there, and he's perfect for this. And and, yeah. and look what happened. Matty Target didn't have a bad game. You know, I can't I can't fault Matty Target defensively and, and trying to get up that top, but his crossing was pretty poor mm. yesterday. And so to bring Leon Bailey to achieve everything Matty Target was doing and get that end ball on, you know, changed the game. Look, look what happened. You know, incredible awareness from the coaches, like you say. You know, fantastic, great. And but I can't stop talking about Bailey. I've just been just been absolutely creasing at him all, all this weekend. I know. Right, so let's move on then. Carabao Cup League action, League Cup action. It's it's steeped in this club's history. Five times winners. It, it's one that means a lot to a lot of Villa fans. You know, h- however old you are, you, you well, depends how old you are, but most Villa fans of an age have seen us lift a trophy, and it would probably be a League Cup trophy. Um, so, Justin. I know you're so nostalgic. You got loads of memorabilia. What does it mean to you? Well, it, it, it's the first real trophy I remember us lifting. You know, I, I was alive during you know when we won the league and, and the European Cup, but I was only five and six years of age, so I don't remember that really that well. But so to coming through, it was always the cup competitions, and in '94, '96, obviously the two we won quite quickly. 94 was the first uh, cup final I ever went to and, and we won it. And then two years later, it was back again. We won it again. I, at that point, I was thinking every time we get to Wembley, we just win, win these competitions. It's fantastic. I've got the programmes here, actually, from both 94 and 96. So they hold real, um, real, the real memories for me, you know, and I like a lot. I've still I kept the match tickets. I've got everything, to be honest. I, I, I hoard everything at the Villa. They're just, you know, winning the competition... Is, is me, it should be the be all and end all for any football club. And, and the way nowadays Champions League, even qualification for Champions League now takes precedent over winning any cup annoys me a bit. I understand that, the, you know, getting to the Champions League is, is a huge achievement and the, the money and everything that comes with it. But I would still rather win a cup because you cannot beat. Just look what happened when to, to, in the playoff final. You can't beat being in that end when you win a trophy. You just can't. There's no, there's no feeling like it. It's it's that feeling we had yesterday times ten because it, it's a, it's an hour after the game watching them lift it and and you know and the league cup is, is huge. You know we were the first to win it. We we've got a massive tradition in it. We've got a great history in it. We've won it five times. You know and it's about time we put another cup back on that mantelpiece at Villa Park, in my opinion. And this season, 
I hopefully will be a comfortable mid-table and it should be a season where we really, really go for it for one of these cups. And the League Cup is, you know, one of the main ones, isn't it? Because they all take the FA Cup a little bit more seriously. So I'm hoping it's a good time to play Chelsea as well. Spot on. Aaron? Uh, for me, mate, it's I'm going to be a bit philosophical, but for me, it's opportunity, it's chance. It's just having that extra option to try and win something when the league has, and is always so very tough. You know, Villa of late, and when I say of late, we're talking five, six, seven, eight years, ten years back, you know, we haven't been the best of teams and, and we've really struggled majority, you know, of, of the time. And I think the League Cup has always just given us that little that little opportunity to just go out there and, and, and win something because some games might fall well in your place, you might get a few teams that are quite beatable and then you find yourselves in the quarterfinals and all of a sudden the fan base is raving and you find yourselves in the semifinals and so on. And I just, I just think the tradition that we've had, like, like, like just says, you know, in the cup, we, we, we have, we have to try and make the league cup another winner for us. I think, um, and I just think the opportunity is fantastic. I, I'd love to see some of the younger boys play in some of these league games as well. Again, like they did in the FA Cup, and you know, I, I just, I just think it's a great chance, it's a great option for us to, to try and win something because we're not going to win the league this year. But it would be lovely, wouldn't it, to take something away? It would be lovely to take some silverware away this year and, and just put a stamp on on, on, on the league and, and put a stamp on the football world again and say, Aston Villa are back, here we are. We just won a league club, you know, and, and we're coming for you. And, and I think that's what, that's what this is about now. So I'd love to see us take the league club seriously. And, and, I, and I believe Chelsea are beatable in, in, in that next game. Um, you know... The scoreline doesn't reflect well, really, in regards to how they beat us last weekend. You know, we played quite well, to be fair. Uh, a few mistakes lost us the game, uh, lost us a few goals. So if we can iron out those mistakes and play a similar Chelsea side, and it probably won't be a similar Chelsea side, it'll probably be a much younger looking Chelsea side, a bit more youthful, maybe a few key players rested. So it's a good opportunity. There's that word again, opportunity, a good chance for us to, to take speed and, and, and move forward. I'm with you. I'm with you, Ryan. Yeah, League Cup is a personal favourite of mine. Um, like Justin, I was there in 94 and I was there in 96. Uh, what, 94? I was 11 years old. So just a baby. And it was it was unreal. Then Leeds as well. I think I sent you a few photos in the group chat in the past. Like, and um, such an amazing time, such amazing memories. 13 year old Ryan thought this was going to happen every season because that's that 96 one, we finished fourth in the league. And the League Cup was a top, top competition. It's it's a shame the way it's evolved in the modern day now because when we won those Cups, it was, it was a massive thing. It was a big thing. Um, obviously, we lost to United in the final as well and, and more recently City. But it's got, I've got some magic memories of it. More so the semi-finals as well, like the Tramia one, the penalty shootout. I've, I've flipping, that was like the first real welcome to what Villa Park was like, rocking that Tramia game when Bozzy was saving them penalties. The Arsenal one as well, when we got through in 96, was tremendous. Um, and then more recently, the Blackburn one, that was that was absolute nuts, wasn't it? 6-4 at Villa Park. Um, and... Um, Leicester as well, Leicester. So they're big, big nights. Them semi-finals steeped in our history. So amazing. Like we've had some, we've had some mares as well, like the, the Boltons and the, and the Bradfords. But it, you know, it's part and parcel of playing cup competition. So for me, I, I, I do hope that we do take this competition very seriously. We've got a good team that I believe can beat anyone on the day. So why not? Why not go pretty much full strength against Chelsea and, and try and get through? Yeah, so let's move on to looking ahead to the Chelsea game then. For me, I feel like we have to play our strongest line that we physically possibly can for this game and we have to just go for it. You know, like like some of you have said, we're not going to win the league, so we've got to go for the cup competitions. And I think the squad at the minute, we've got we've got a really good squad. We've got two players in every position that are more than capable of coming on and competing in every game. Um, if you looked at... Chelsea's next fixtures, they've got uh, us in the Cup, Man City at the weekend, Juventus in the Champions League. So they're not going to be playing their first 11 in this game on Wednesday, albeit that their bench is pretty good today. We had hudson Odoi on the bench, uh, Saul was on the bench, so their team of Werner was on the bench. So they've got some very good players that are going to be playing in this game, but I feel like if we can put in a strong team and go for it. 
I'm I'm pretty confident we can get a result. I'm going to be at the game as well, so um, hopefully it's a good game to be at as well. Um, Aaron, how, how do you see us approaching this game? Then, what, 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 how do you feel like we're going to go? Who are we going to play? Yeah, I, gr- I agree with you when you say playing our strongest team and giving Chelsea everything we've got. But I think the question I'd like to ask you, and I guess everybody who says the strongest side, like define strongest. So I think at the moment, strongest could mean strongest attacking or strongest possessional wise, strongest defensively. You know, what what is our strongest side? I think it needs to be a kind of combination of all of those all of those things that we possess and we have now. Um, so I don't know our strongest side really, Luke. That, that's my honest answer. But that is the side that we need to be putting out, whether that's, a, you know, a big defensive anchor at the back and then all guns blazing at the front with all of our flair, talisman doing their thing. I, I just don't know. Um, but it's, is it an away game? Yes, it's an yeah. away game, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, for me, away games, you've got nothing to lose. Yes, let's, let's go there. Let's give them everything we've got. Start on the front foot, you know, um, gung-ho, you know, get that football manager version onto gung-ho and let's just go for it. Let's just show them what we've got. And, um there's no way that with all of our attacking flair and, and skill now that we have in the squad that we can't we can't give it a good go. You know what I mean? Um, defensively, we're solid. We know that. We've seen that. The players we've brought in, Axel, for example, to, to kind of solidify that defence, you know, he's, he's, he's sound as a pound. So um, I, I just think, yes, mate, let's go for it. Um, I honestly believe that we can get a win. I do. Um, but I don't know the strongest side, mate. But I know that that is what we have to play against Chelsea next weekend. Yeah, Ryan. Who do, who do you see starting then? I'd like only a few little tweaks. The likes of Watkins and that still need minutes, don't they? Um, we need to, you know, we had a disjointed preseason, and I think we we, we need to continue getting these players up to speed. And this is a good game. I'd, I'd like to see Emmy stay in goal. I know we normally swap to stay for the cup games, but I just think that this is a huge, huge opportunity for us. And Matt. The back three, if we go back three again, you can only really make one change, and that's House come in for what for one of them, maybe Twan Um I see the thing is with Twan Zabi is though he ain't playing against Man United, is he? That's yeah. true. So probably I mean, he, he I, comes I see... in Conza or Mings drops out, yeah. So I see But Twan... I, I don't think it should be too much. I don't think there should be too much chopping and changing. Yes, no, Trey already needs okay. minutes. Uh, the, yeah, there is certain players that need minutes and that there's good young players that we need to give this experience to. But I think for this feature, I think let, let's let's keep it as our strongest setup that we can. Definitely, Justin. Yeah, I think I think he'll keep the formation he's had the last two games because it worked very well against Chelsea, didn't he? I think he'll make, like Ryan says, very few changes. I can see Ashley will maybe coming in, playing one of the fullback positions. I think House comes in. Possibly, uh, and Buendia probably could do with a start as well uh, coming back. So I can see probably those changes being made. But I'll, I'm all for it, all guns, like um, Aaron said, all guns blazing in attack. I mean, not stupidly, so we get left the back door open. But we, it's a cup game, so you got to leave everything out on the pitch. You know, they are going to be strong still. I was in the Chelsea podcast the other week, and you know, I asked them the question: How strong do you think they'll go? And, and he said, Well. All our 11s are strong and, and he ain't lying, is he really? You look at just have a look at the bench there today, it's full of internationals. So, even if you change them all, they're all going to be international quality players, aren't they? So, it's going to be a really tough game, but it's a cup competition. I think it's a competition we could do really well in. And, and I've just got a sneaky feeling we're going to get a result on Wednesday night. I think we're going to knock them out. <laughs> you've, you've, all, you've, all, <laughs> you've all mentioned the bench, right? Yesterday, Aston Villa had three players on the bench worth ninety million pound attacking players. Yeah. Yep. When the hell has that ever happened before? Unreal. I mean, it's, Unreal. It's, it's, it's a different ball game for us now, isn't it? Very different. I think yeah. it's a shame that um, that we have drawn Chelsea. To be honest, because after what happened at Barrow, you know, all the young players came and did so well. It would have been nice to see us draw, you know, another League One or League Two side, because we could have probably then still had a mixture of our first and, and youth team players. But unfortunately, because it's Chelsea away, and I think it's a competition we need to do well in. I think he will go very strong. I hope he does. I hope he really does go really strong. Yeah, definitely. Right, so we'll, we'll end this one here then. We'll go around and we'll do our little score predictions. Justin, you know, we, we have had you back on this one, mate, because, um, you know, you, you had Sorry. your one game ban. So um, try and be nice and positive then. I'll kick it off. I'm going to go 1-1 one, one, and we win on pens. Ryan? Do you know what? 
I was thinking in my head, we're going to a big club. And I was thinking of the Man City when we went to Man City and we won 4-2. Then I noticed Aaron is wearing that shirt. So I'm going to go 2-2 and we win 4-2 in extra time. A repeat of that performance. Does, does it go to pens though? Oh, it does, doesn't it? Uh, oh, it's changed. Uh, 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 ah, forget it then. 4-2 uh, four, four in the 90th minute. In the 90 <laughs> then. <laughs> we'll see. Aaron? Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't doubt that Chelsea will probably score one, if not two. So we need to be on a game and make sure that we're scoring and putting our chances away. Um, I'll go for a Villa 3-2. Last five minutes, third, three, yeah, last, last five minutes, third goal, winner. Plus it, Eerie then. Justin? I'm actually going very similar to Aaron and Ryan. I think there'll be an absolute goal fest on Wednesday night. I think there'll be an early <laughs> one and I think it'll open the floodgates. I'm going for a 4-3 Villa win. Oh. And you're going to have an absolutely amazing night, mate, if that's the case. <laughs> well, I'm going to stay over. I'm going to stay over yeah. and get on the session. You'll be you'll be postrate on the ready, uh, on the seat all night. If, you, if we win 4-3, you'll be hammered. <laughs> oh, my God. Imagine. Right, so... I hope everybody's enjoyed the content. We've smashed about 600 videos out this weekend. (laughs) So uh, we're going to have a break for a bit. Um, But thanks for supporting. um, And let's hope we can be in the next round. Up the villa. Up the villa. Up the villa.